Alright, what's up, everybody? Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, I've been asked about it a couple times, so finally here's it's going to come. Um, this is going to be my best attempt at a Babylon 101 video. Um, the first thing to understand about this matchup, uh, or any Babylonian matchup, is that all of them have slight variations. Um, and so the build I'm going to show you here is a stable opening, but um, it's really important to know that there are a lot of different openings you can do. And so if you have specific questions about specific builds, feel free to message me, um, and I'll do the best I can to try and get back to you and um, lay them all out. So um, without further ado, here we go. Um, the Kind of the standard opening, uh, you want to find your hunt, you want to kill your hunt just like you do... Um, anything else. Um, notice that the second ox cart comes after the first villager. That gives that first villager time to start chopping wood and by the time that ox cart's coming out then you're ready to go. Um, I need to quick set this on. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're just, this is just a quick Babylonian mirror. Um, I don't really know how good this guy is, but I, I don't expect anything too special, I guess, um, but we'll we'll just kind of play here for a little bit and see what happens. Um, so you can see I've got, right now, I've got three over there, and I've got three up here, and then I've got another one coming, and I'm going to make another, uh, another storehouse. Make sure you kill all of your hunts, do a good job scouting around your base, just like um, all the normal stuff. And basically what you're going to want is you're going to want three here, three here and then you're going to want to get two over here and then you're going to want to put the rest on wood until you can age and then you're going to want to directly age up off that off that. Um, note that if you can't find a second hunt you can send this ox cart over to here um, and just split up your wood villagers slightly better and um, and then put all of your food gathering villagers on one location um, and if you don't have I mean, if you really don't have any hunt whatsoever at all, then you can put them over on the berries. But um, usually you should have a hunt. Um, so there I got my 200, 200. I'm aging up. Notice that I keep, kept the constant flow of vills. I didn't cut the vills so that I could um, get that slightly early, earlier. You always want to be having um, a nice even flow of vills. So make sure you always keep the villagers coming. Never stop producing villagers. So I'm building one with... Um, building the ziggurat with one villager. Um, I've still got the even split five on food. Everyone else over on wood. Um, not worrying about gold just quite yet. Um, because um, you can continue to build villagers and you're going to have a few more on food early game, you really want to get as much wood as you can in the transition so that you can get that stable coming as soon as possible. Um, as soon as possible, right when you ding age two. So, see, I just got to age two, um, and there's the extra 200. So I'm going to shift my hotkeys around, and here comes the stable. And then with the next 50 wood you get, that's when you want to get the next ox cart, and then you're going to want to start some people over on wood too. So, got a stable coming up. We've got seven on wood, one building, and then five on food. Um, do all the other normal good stuff, get all your upgrades. Uh, I've got the handsaw coming. Um, delay the, the pickaxe just a little bit. It makes your early game uh, macro slightly easier, allowing you to get houses up, um, allowing you to get that structure up a little bit earlier, and then make sure you scout, 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 scout. So scout and see what he has. As soon as my stable's done, I'm going to want to start queuing up Cav. Um, little mistake there. Um, I got housed, so instead of um, instead of wasting my time, I started to get loom. Um, and then as soon as that comes up, we're going to want to try and raid around and see what we can do. With our next 200 wood after that, we're going to build a barracks in this matchup. Um, I'm going to build a barracks. In general, I would say um, that could be an archer range in some other matchups, but in this matchup, we're going to uh, we're gonna make it a we're gonna make it a barracks, 
I'm going to raid over here because I saw I had some villagers over here. And make sure with your first units, um, you're really active with your units. I'm going to go for the ox cart just because if I kill the ox cart, that shuts down his entire economy. Um, and then with that next 200 wood that comes, make sure you still don't get housed as much as possible. Um, you're going to want to make a archery range. So here's the 111, just like we did with all the other sieves basically aside from Egypt which can't like technically 111 just because well you can't because they only have three military buildings um, but just like the other civs um, we've got now kind of like a 111 type thing going on here um, make sure that you micromanage your ox car as best as possible um, you want to try and get as mm, as much efficiency on your resources as possible. Um, he's microing. Uh, I'm not really. I'm trying to talk and do other things at once. Um, trying. Eh, maybe I shouldn't have quite done that. Uh, we're gonna back up here. And then you want kind of like a, a nice even mix of all five units. When I when I say that, I actually do mean it. You really want like pretty much all five units and there are the one kind of awkward thing about Babylon's unit comp is without all five unit types they can really be actually quite awkward so you want to have like all five of their units you want to have a good mix of all of their different unit types and then you want to scout and see what he has and then whatever he has you want to try and counter what he has so uh, I'm going to micro a little bit here oh he's running away And we keep making units. Um, yeah, we're winning that fight. We got a shield bearer. Probably don't need shield bearer. So now, once now we've seen what he has, now we kind of know what to make. So now we're gonna make another archery range because he's got quite a bit of spearmen. Um, he doesn't seem to have an archery range just yet, which means that. Um, which means that we should actually cut off on the shield bearers and make more spearmen. Alright, and make sure we're getting all the upgrades. Alright, there we go. Keep making villagers, keep making spearmen. Do all this. Even our economy a little bit. Alright, and here we go once again. Try and get some bowmen coming. Make sure we just keep up the unit flow. Keep up the villagers. And unit positioning, unit positioning, unit positioning. It's really, really important with this sieve. Um, it's important with every sieve, but it might be more important with this sieve just because um, of the way that their unit counters work. Um, their unit counters tend to be a little bit awkward and so if you have really good positioning um, just like with any sieve um, it's gonna help you but probably more so even with um, well probably not more so but it's it's gonna it's gonna really help you a lot by having good unit positioning for for example Greeks um, don't really need that important of unit positioning they kinda just smash it all in um, and they win but with with Babylon, it's really important to make sure that like your slingers are hitting the archers, that your cav are out front, you know, tanking damage, that your spearmen are effectively on the cav, that your shield bearers are in the the depths of the archer line, so that they're doing. Um, they've just got so many units with so many multipliers that they can't really afford to just have like units just like kind of like hitting, and they don't have like the the leisure that Greek has of just like kind of smashing it all in and having it just nicely work out so um, hopefully that gives you an idea of the build I would say in general opening stables is moderately safe um, against Egypt you probably don't want to open cav just because um, it's it's not that good right I mean they have camels which kind of kind of hold it but then you can kind of do the same thing you open an archery range instead of the um, instead of the stable and um, and then you just kind of get you still want like the even mix you want to try and get in almost all situations you want an even mix of both archer type units um, 
at least spearmen if they're going really archer heavy you want to get some shield bearers and then the cav and really use the cav to raid around um, and get good position because those cav are really really strong they're kind of the backbone of the babylonian army um, and so if you can use those cav effectively you should find yourself doing pretty well so um that's my attempt at a Babylon 101 video. Hopefully you learned something. Um, hopefully you kind of got an idea for a general build and a general idea of what you should be trying to do. Um, just like in all the other 101 videos that I've said, you want to try and keep nice building walls. And notice how I'm like kind of keeping my gold mine safe um, by setting up this building wall. Um, you want to still hunt when available. Um, obviously it gathers really fast. I probably should have been hunting out here instead of being on berries. Um, and then you want to try and keep your macro down. You want to try and keep uh, your resources as low as possible. Keep building houses. Don't get houses. Keep making villagers and do all that good stuff. So um, hopefully that helped you. If you have any specific questions, feel free to shoot me a message and I'll be happy to try and answer it the best I can. So thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed. Bye.